Okay, so I'm going to start uh, burning the scales on here. Um, I've got my uh, scale tip on. I think this was a three millimeter. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this was a five millimeter. And I've done some practice runs on a scrap piece here just to make sure it's um, the heat. I've got the heat right. And it looks like it's going to be about right. So I'll start. Um, I'll start working my way down the lateral line and then work my way out of it. Um, I do have a smaller scale tip. Uh, it's one size smaller when I get towards the top of the back and then down towards the belly and uh, in some of the cheat scales I'll go to a little bit smaller tip for that so I'm gonna start right here this lateral line run is always the hardest for me I need a tad bit more heat. Sometimes I'm not watching what I'm doing. I don't go all the way to the tip of the other scale and it probably can't see it after it's painted but it just bugs me and you got to watch the heat too because sometimes the um, sometimes the wood gets softer in some places like uh, if the grains tighter together or if it's in a soft spot between grain It'll burn faster. A couple of my other projects, I didn't get this lateral line scale straight. And the lateral line doesn't, on the other projects, doesn't, it's there, but it's, it's off center of the scale. And, uh, on my live specimen, it's it's right center of the scale, and they make a um, a lateral line tip, but I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it burns the scale. It looks it's too pronounced when it's finished. Some people may like it, but I don't really care for it. I'd rather go back and I'll show you how to do that. Um, I just use the tip of it. It's kind of hard to see, but this has a little a tip. And I'll just come in and do a little notch on both sides of the line. can't really see it oh, maybe you can 
it'll show up more after it's painted. And I've learned you don't have to make these scales, you don't have to burn them in as deep as you think they need to be. Uh, with the first time I've done it, uh, I ruined a scale tip because I was pressing too hard and I wouldn't let the burner do the work and I was trying to get it burned in deeper and I was running it way hotter than I needed to. So just a light, I mean, this is going to be, this might be too much, but uh, once it's all burned in, I'll go over it with a light sanding just to kind of smooth out the edges and they'll still show up nice when it's uh, come time to paint. I didn't quite get that one. I'm going to roll just a little bit. When you get on a curved surface, you have to kind of roll it just a little bit. I'm getting to the point where I'll stop on this end because it's uh, probably about right here because the scales will need to get just a little bit smaller on that end. So I'll switch to the smaller tip after I've burned all these in with this size. Okay, so I'm going to stop about right there and I'll switch to the smaller size as I go to the edge of the tail. Then I'll come up here and start filling in. Sometimes I get to pressing too hard and the tip gets a little out of shape. So I'll just lightly bend it back in shape. That's telling me I'm pressing too hard, so I need to let up a little bit and let the burner do the work. Another thing I've noticed on these razor tips, on this BPH pen, is it'll lose contact with the screws a little bit, or a little bit of carbon builds up on there, and it'll stop burning. Um, so sometimes you have to stop and let it cool off, and I'll loosen those screws up. And um, I've got a little emery board that I'll kind of scratch around on it to. Uh, Scratch the carbon on it off. Sometimes you can just loosen and tighten the screw and that'll uh, give you enough to uh, keep working. It takes a little concentration to, get, to keep them all straight. get kind of monotonous it's not as bad as the trout I think it was a, uh, a two millimeter scale tip on the trout I'm not going to worry about uh, scale count on these it's gonna be close uh, I know biologically there's a certain number of scales 
from the lateral line to the top of the back. Same with the, the certain number from the lateral line down. Uh, a certain number from the front of the head to the back of the tail. Uh, this will be close. Uh, I doubt this one will be going any kind of competition. Uh, and I don't think they look at that in, in local stuff. Maybe a world competition they might. Uh, I'm not good enough to be in a world competition yet. So um, I know it's going to be close. It'll be close enough to look good. This pin, I mean, it's got this um, rubber grip here, but it does the heat coming off of it. I mean, it, I'll start inching down towards that, and that little ceramic piece there, it'll it'll set you on fire. <laughs> I've learned the hard way. So I can always tell when I'm getting too close to it. It starts. Starts cooking my hand a little bit. And I probably will start stopping up here on this big one. Because I'll need to go smaller on the bottom. I may do one more pass on the top here. And then start going smaller on the top. And maybe a couple rows up here on this one. Sometimes I miss connecting them right and I'll take the corner of it and go back in and just kind of smooth it down make, make them connect there's one right there some of the lateral line before I lose the pencil line okay it'll show up nice once it's painted and primed it's probably the best lateral line I've done <laughs> it's straight and even on the scales anyway Doing a crappy job of keeping these straight. Fingers are cramping. And the heat from this thing rises up and it it gets hot on the fingers. Screwed this row up here, right here. It won't show as much after it's painted, primed and painted, but I'll know it's there. Just made a couple little reference ticks there where I stopped over here and work to where I'll start with the smaller tip. So it'll be the same. I did the same up here a while ago. That's just a little reference tick where I stopped over here. Okay, so I've swapped out the tips for the 
um, three millimeter. I went from the uh, six to the three. And I had to turn the heat down a little bit because it's just a little bit smaller tip. It'll heat up faster. It's got less metal to heat up. So it'll get hotter faster. So, all right, that looks good. And the trick is to get these to blend in. With the bigger scale so you have to kind of play around with the uh, with the spacing a little bit and also as I get closer down to the where the skull starts from the body to the skull, which would be this little indention right here. The scales get even smaller, so I have a little bit smaller, even a smaller tip. This is a uh, two or two millimeter, I believe. And I'll also stop making quite a, as a deep impression as I get, so it's just a lighter impression, so the scales will kind of fade out as they get closer to the front of the head. I'm going to establish me a line going across here to connect to the other side. So these will all be uniform up here on top. So what I'm doing, I'm just going all the way over to the other side. And incorporate them in over here. Alright, I'll put this smaller tip on and I'm just doing light indentions here as I get closer to the skull. And they'll still be visible but they're just going to be faint after it gets painted, primed and painted, they'll be faint. Which is pretty close to how it is on a real fish and I even turn the heat down just a little bit so that's not burning as deep so just leave a little light hint of a scale Kind of touch it on the end here, fade it out to a okay. I'm gonna finish these top and a little section down here and a little section right here, and then I'll be done with it. Okay, I've got all the scales on the body done. All that's left now is to do the gill covers in the cheek area, um, on both sides. I'm gonna draw those in because they're just, on the gill covers, they're just a little irregular shape. They're not uniform on the gill covers. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of draw in the, the uh, scale pattern here uh, before I start burning it just to keep my just so I can keep my uh, Keep it straight on how I want to do it So I'm gonna get started on that
doing these scales by freehand with just this round tip here because they're just a little bit irregular on this part of the scale on this part of the gill and doing it by hand gives you that gives me that irregular shape Now these cheat scales are a little smaller, but they're, they look a little more uniform, but they also have some irregular shapes down here. So I'm just going to do all these by hand as well. keep flipping back and forth here to make sure the pattern is since I'm not since I didn't draw that out I'm making sure the pattern is close to the same over here okay Got the scales all done and uh, fairly happy with it overall. Could have done a little bit better job on keeping them uniform, uh, but I'm I'm still learning. Uh, I'll get the hang of it eventually. Uh, part nine is going to be uh, attaching the fins permanently, uh, giving it a seal coat, and uh, possibly setting the eyes and, uh, and the coat of gesso. Uh, the final uh, video will be painting, so. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, see you on the next one.